morning, YouTube. Madam Roy back again. I have another garage sale finds video for you today. As you can probably tell, I am really excited about this one. And if you're watching this, you can probably see why. So without further ado, let's get started. First, I'm going to start over here on the right side. I picked up this Logitech K400 wireless keyboard. Uh, it's actually a keyboard with a touchpad. You can see that the uh, touchpad and the keyboard are built in together. This is something similar to uh, what Vlogging Life uh, Adam has uh, for his downstairs computer, for those of you who know who he is. And as you can see, I gave a whopping $5 for it. And it is absolutely brand new in package. I don't want to take the whole thing apart, but as you can see, it's still in its original plastic, and it does have the uh, wireless dongle there. Um, it has two of them. I'm not sure what this one's for. That's interesting. That looks like Bluetooth. Oh, okay. You know what? Maybe one of them is Bluetooth, and the other is just regular USB. Okay, no, what this is, this is an extension, so... Uh, if you don't want to actually put this directly into the USB port, you can actually plug this. Let's see if I can do this one-handed. You can plug this into here, like this. You can do this the right way. It's just a little stiff. And then you have an extension for it, so not too bad. Next we have this Franklin speech by Franklin. This is the Language Master LM4000. Um, pronunciating Dictionary and Thesaurus. Now, I'm not going to talk too much about this because I believe, I'm, I know I'm going to do a video specifically about this because I remember when these came out um, when I was younger and I was actually uh, in an episode of uh, Double Dare. I was in the audience and they asked me some questions uh, and towards the end of the episode when they were giving stuff away you know after you did the physical challenges this was one of the items that they actually gave away I don't know if it's this specific model but I remember it was a language master and as you can see it's from right around that time 1992 is when this one came out so uh, that is going to be the subject of its own video in the very near future Next we have something not too exciting, uh, but all the less, this is a Sony uh, Make and Believe, so it's one of the newer models, a 7-in-1 universal remote control, so it does TV, DVD, or Blu-ray. I didn't even notice that it did Blu-ray, that's really interesting, I may get some nice use out of this. I want to hook up a separate remote for that Blu-ray player I have down there, which is a Sony. Uh, VCR, CD, cable satellite. Uh, DVR or PVR, digital video recorder, personal video recorder, and an amp. So you can control seven devices. You see I gave a whopping dollar for this. And this is also brand new in package. Uh, there you go. It's from 2011, if my camera will focus. So yeah, I'm happy with, definitely happy with that. Next... I got two of these RCA branded um, TV antennas. Now these can be used for many different things. Uh, they're, but they are branded as, <laughs> that's interesting, made by the AudioVox accessory company. I didn't know they were making uh, RCA branded antennas. That's kind of interesting. You can see made in China. There's the model number. And looks like the date code dates it somewhere to around 2012. Now the reason I got these, and I did, I just paid a dollar a piece for these. I wouldn't, I wouldn't pay any more because I mean they're only maybe three or four dollars new in the store. Um, is I want to replace the one I have up there, which sends the, which is the antenna for my HD radio, because that one that I have up there is really, really cheap. I showed that in a previous video. So I got two of these. So I got one extra one. You know, I'll probably use that to hook up to the other TV that I have over there, because. As of right now, the only TV in here that has an antenna hooked up for over-the-air broadcasting is my RCA 40-inch right there. Alright, so we're going to come over here. Next thing I got is this 20-inch Westinghouse LCD monitor. Um, this is a decent monitor. It, it's not a um, 
widescreen. It's actually the 4x3 format. But I some people actually like this. So if I'm the, I, I've actually gotten requests when I've built computers in the past for people to make sure I have a few of these lying around because they still can't get used to that widescreen format. And that's why I picked these up when I can. And I, I gave, uh, I think I paid five bucks for this. You can see in the back here. Uh, it's a Westinghouse model W2046NV, made, there's the exact date, July 17, 2007. So it's, it's decently new. I mean, that makes it about eight years old now. You can see, this was kind of interesting. Westinghouse decided it was a good idea to put the switches behind. Never liked this design because if, if you're in front... You actually have to turn this just to the side to see what each one does. And then you got to reach around and push it. So, not one of my favorite uh, features of this monitor. But I did plug it in and it works really well. Underneath you can see it has a VGA and DVI. Of which the uh, VGA one is the only one being used at the moment. And then of course you have your standard power plug. And a very, very noisy base for some reason. Okay, I've probably tortured you guys enough. I know that ever since the beginning of this video, you guys have been wanting to see this. Yes, this is a iMac G4 uh, running at 800 megahertz. The sticker on the bottom says it's an 800 megahertz G4 with 256 megabytes of RAM and a CD burner and a 60 gigabyte drive. Whether or not that's what's actually in here anymore, I don't know. Um, it does boot up, but it, it's password locked, so I can't actually get in right now. This is going to be the subject of a video most likely later on today, because I'm not going to wait very long to start playing with this. I've been wanting a vintage Mac for doing some vintage OS X gaming. Um, I have a version of... Um, my mind just went blank. Uh, I have a version of Tomb Raider for this. I have a version of Max Payne for this. And they only run on the older G3, G4. So I am totally stoked to start using this. I got this, uh, let's join, I got this for 10 bucks, which I thought was an awesome deal. I know they're not worth a lot anymore, but you know, for $10, I figured I couldn't get hurt too bad if there was a major problem with it. Uh, as you can see, it's in good shape. This is one of what they call the lampshade designs, because I, I guess it kind of looks like a lampshade here, and then it's got the arm that some like those older desk lamps would have. Got the Mac logo on front. In here is what I assume is just the regular CD burner, maybe a DVD drive, I'm not sure, but by looking at the sticker on the uh, bottom, I think it was just a regular CD burner. Turning it to the back, for those of you that have never actually seen one of these before, we have the power switch right there. Right here we have a display port, and I don't know, I'm not a Mac guy, so I don't know the proper term, but I know that's for outputting another display. What you do is you actually plug in a special cord that goes in here, and the other end gives you a DVI or VGA out, depending on, you know, which one you purchase. Three USB 1.1 ports. Uh, this was before 2.0 came out, at least at least for these computers. Uh, you have a built-in modem here. This is the power plug, and this does pull out. This is one of those uh, three-prong, what I like to call Mickey Mouse ear power cords. Uh, you'll find some of these plugging into uh, laptop power bricks, but other than that, I haven't really seen them too much. Uh, actually, I, I did. I take it back. I did have a few monitors that use this type of power cable as well. Right here, we have your Ethernet port, which I hope works because uh, she said this does not have an AirPort card, which I kind of expected for a system of this age. Uh, your two FireWire 400 ports. There are no FireWire 800s on these models. Uh, I think that didn't come until the uh, iMac G5s. And you have your microphone headphone port. And last but not least is just a Kensington lock port. Now, I do have a keyboard mouse for it. They did give me the proper mouse. This is most likely what would have come with it. It's just a regular Apple Pro mouse. 
but the keyboard, unfortunately, is one for an older iMac. This would have been with the iMac G3s. And she actually did have two of those as well, but those are just a little too old. I, I really, I'm not a, a hardcore Mac collector. I mean, I know somebody who really was into Macs might have wanted those, but I really couldn't find much of a use for the original iMacs. But the keyboard does work, and it's in decent shape. It's just called the Apple USB keyboard. So that is it for this week of the of garage sale finds. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Definitely stay tuned for a video about this Mac coming very soon, possibly today. If I feel like filming it, I do have some other chores I have to do, but this is definitely going to take priority over some of them. Please remember to like and subscribe. And as always, have a blessed day, everybody.